Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is uh, Sunday, April 5th, 2020. <clears throat> Howard is wearing a Trends t-shirt. A Trends t-shirt. There are no trends, but uh, I'm trying to stay optimistic. So what's what? it's been gorgeous here. What's the weather like there? In San Diego, it's a bit cloudy, but uh, nothing to complain. Okay. Are you been cooped up now? Like, are, are you going out at all? I go on walks, but obviously I cannot go to a gym, so I work out at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, so doing your military workouts, like like a Navy SEAL. What do they call them? Uh, prison cell workouts. <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, there there's so much free information on YouTube. Yeah. So, all right, let me share my screen. And uh, <clears throat> so, so on Friday, I. Uh, decided to look at the performance of the S&P 500 and the other major indices for the past year. And what I noticed is that for the past year, the S&P is down uh, 13, 14%. Russell 2000, which is the small cap index, is down about 33%. Over the year, it's down 33%? For the past 12 months. Wow. We're talking about the past 12 months. So the S&P down, down 13, but the NASDAQ 100 was flat. So for the past one year, it's basically has just given up its gains. Mm -hmm. And the big you know, question here is, is the tech sector, are the tech companies so immune to this correction? Or maybe are they the next big shoe to drop? <clears throat> because even if we look at, we look at the longer term chart of the NASDAQ 100, it didn't even come close to its... Um, yeah, it kind of stayed point. inside its trend, yeah. So that's the subject. I think it's a good subject for today. From December 2018. Yeah. So uh, that's the big, the next big question because, I mean, everything else is, is pretty obvious. We're already, we already seeing airlines making new all-time lows. Even it became clear on Friday that Warren Buffett has been a heavy seller of his own airline holdings. But he's sophisticated. He may be doing that for many reasons. He may be yes. doing that to get ready to put that money in the bond reorder, reorg. You know, yeah. so many reasons a wealthy person just, you know, I'm reading so many theories, but he ain't panic selling. He either is saving some money because they aren't savable to common or which possible, uh, but he's still going to be involved in the reorg. So. Yeah, just, uh, that's what I think too. But the, if he was willing the, to buy it at 48, he had a plan. If he was willing to buy him 100% higher, he had a plan. Exactly. But the common shareholders can still <clears throat> get wiped out. Wiped yeah. out yes. yeah. oh, I, I, we've never recommended an airline stock in three years here. So, uh, you know, good luck to people. Like, uh, I'm just, we don't out, talk about. just 10 days after the, the so called momentum low, uh, there are already quite a few stocks making new all time lows. Correct. Yeah. Many of them airlines, there are some uh, retailers, retail space, uh, for example, North, Nordstrom, which is a kind of high oh end. Oh my goodness, so 40 to 12? Where? Nordstrom. Uh, and not only that, I mean, Macy's is already a, a five. Yeah, but they were walking dead. But the valuation drops are crazy, six billion to one billion, basically. Exactly. I mean, many of them are training like a P oh of, one, of one and two, but <laughs> are they going to survive? You know, that's the big thing. And any of those, if they survive, well, they can't. I'm like, oh, wait, if you pull back Macy's, people aren't going to rush back to the to the department stores anytime soon. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, wait, where, where, where people weren't broke, the banks were broke, a lot of people were out of work. Uh, people still had to move on with their life. It wasn't a terrorist attack. This is, this is different. Socially, people are going to change. Malls won't be busy. Uh, what's what's it? Yeah, like my wife said, you don't need anything. My wife is now, uh, we actually have an audience for this show. My wife is listening in and yelling comments. The, um, but she wasn't a Macy's person before, but we have friends that work there. We, uh, Rishi's wife, uh, stuck with CEO, she works there as, in, as a lead, you know, uh, uh, VP. So can't be pretty, but I was looking at Shake Shack as another example. It's not a retailer, but a restaurant. And that's hitting... That's hitting all-time lows for the company. Yeah. Do Do you know if they own all of their franchises or like? I don't know, but obviously they can't. Unlike McDonald's, which has still kept all their stores open for drive-through, I don't think Shake Shack is set up for drive-throughs. So 
they're literally shut down. I mean, maybe they have some drive up, but drive up is not working after, you know, once you go past a month, people get tired of supporting their local Shake Shack. So you have to be open. So basically Shake Shack's a zero, you know, on paper, just in fascinating, it was a hundred dollars stock. Uh, it's on my list to just watch because I'm fascinated by this because this is a brand that people do love. I'm not a huge fan, but uh, you wake up in February, the stock's at 100 and you disappear and you just think, you know, and, and I'm just, so if people think they know what's going on, no. I, I keep telling people, think of the market right now as venture capital. You have to buy bulletproof brands and you have to, treat them like they can go to zero, meaning like a venture capitalist treats a portfolio. Now you're different, you're, you're intraday and you're also short, but let's pull up three stocks. That, what? I'm sorry, what did you say? Three stocks? Ellen's upset with something, she threw something that she spiked a water bottle just now. The, uh, the, um, let's pull up my three stocks that I was, I was trading for a while uh, from uh, Latin America, uh, PAGS and Stone. These are like... Yeah, they've been hit pretty hard, yeah. So I'm saying like, if people believe that the world's not coming to an end, these, these companies are now trading below their IPO prices. So, uh, and they've grown. Obviously this, this virus is gonna affect transactions, et cetera. But now is a chance for people, if you loved it at 40 and it's not completely tied to uh, uh, the economy on a comeback, you can start putting on you know, a portfolio of, of, of broken companies that have good margins and clean balance sheets at 60, 70% off their prices and start acting like a venture capitalist. You know, you put 30 grand towards 10 companies or hundred grand towards 10 to 20 companies and just forget about them for six years because even if they only just get back to their old highs in six, seven years, you've made three, four times your money. So, so I think we're going to start seeing people do what I'm doing, which is, you know, building a basket of, of broken leaders. Uh, it's not exciting. It's different than, uh, it's scary. It's a little different than our, my strategy, but since I'm not shorting stocks, uh, this is a time to look through, you know, if you love Shake Shack and think the, the virus is going to open, you want to speculate on owning the company uh, for its August opening or July opening, uh, you're buying it at 70, 80% off and just know that you could lose everything. So you have to start framing your investments a little bit differently in my world, which is exciting for me because I don't want to check prices every day. And this is maybe a once in a lifetime, uh, very risky, but way to build a venture capital stock portfolio. Yeah, but if, if you do that, I mean, the one advice I can give is just don't put all your money in at once. Just be ready to be wrong initially and just be ready to, you know, every Yeah, I think what you do is you're ready to be wrong by 40%. Like if it's venture capital, it really could be zero. But I mean, if it's zero, if great companies go to zero, there's bigger problems. But I think, yes, you, you, you average either average in over the next 20% down, each 20% each down or 10% down. But yeah, you don't have to buy it all tomorrow. Or maybe not even start tomorrow. But you have to build a list of what you think were venture capital ready public companies. <clears throat> Mercado Libra, another one, you know. Will it see 300s? Yeah, it looks like it'll see low 300s on the next break. So, you know, you put in some bids. <clears throat> and uh, but you also got to remember that it once was 10 in the OA yeah. correction. Under, under 10. All right. So go back to what you were talking about, the indexes. Okay. So, I mean, I already said it. That basically, the, the tech sector has held a lot better. And um, I think that... And this correction continues, which is very likely, even if we see a sideways choppy movement, I think tech might be the next uh, target uh, for yeah. short sellers, just because we still see some very high valuations, uh, especially in the software space, uh, valuation which cannot be justified in, in a bear market. So we might see, I mean, for example, this company, Alteryx, is already down 50% 50, 50 from its all-time high. But this stock can easily uh, go down another 50%. Well, it can perform very well is what you're saying. And the multiple could contract to 40 times earnings and be a yes. great company and trade at $40. So, you yes. have, so again, this is relative venture capital, meaning you have to bet on 
own, they're not going out of business, but you have to bet on decline in sales and multiple contractions. So what's a good price? You know, maybe 40 times earnings. Obviously that's still high, but for a growth stock. So you've got to be prepared if you're buying today to be buy more at 40 or position size properly. So I agree with you there. I think, I think tech is what they come for next uh, because that's been perceived as, you know, the safe haven. Yeah. And also I'm, I'm already starting to notice uh, so quite a few breakouts uh, in the stocks that try to make new 52 week uh, highs. It kind of held a little bit better, but for example, a stock like DocuSign trading at almost 300 times earnings. Yeah. I don't think that's can be justified in any way. So well, bear market, it's just, it's crazy to buy breakouts. I mean, you can try them, but I think you're going to overall get disappointed. So but yeah, at 60, I'm at 60. I got an alert set at 60 because that means the market's in a panic because this is going to have a, a <clears throat> DocuSign will, will grow their business through this because people will stop going to law offices and people will just accept this as an extra thing they have to do, which is a no brainer now, which is like, I don't need to go to sign something at a bank. I want my banks to send me this stuff by DocuSign. Yeah, and but they have competitors. Like they're not the only one in the business. They're so. not the only one, but, but they're building their brand. I mean, no doubt, no doubt. Again, I'm with you on all, all this, so keep going. Um, it's obviously, <clears throat> what's working right now is still some speculative uh, biotech names uh, related to the coronavirus and also some uh, many of the food stocks, uh, grocery stores, um, food distributors, they're, they're kind of holding uh, better uh, than the rest. For example, this one, uh, Hain, which has been a a big dock for quite some time and now it's kind of setting up for a potential breakout. I think it might have a 10, 20% upside here yep. in the right market. But as you can see, it's been in a huge yep. downtrend for a while and right now it's building a new base here with a yep. pivot to around 2750, 28. Well, I think you both and I are like watching this lake, which is a biohazard suit company. Oh yeah, like <laughs> absolutely. I mean, obviously. Highly spec. <clears throat> insane but they definitely are in in the right industry and they might they might experience significant growth in the next few years I mean, they should. they're not a fake company they were trading at 11 bucks for years can we go back they're further making money. they're making money they're growing but they might see an explosive growth uh, yeah. in the near term and I bought a little friday i think you're, you're long yeah i'm long to uh the area near 1840 um uh, it's been a decent uh, resistance. So once that's clear, <clears throat> might talk about another potential move higher. But as of right now, it's kind of stuck here in that range between 1850 and and 15. <clears throat> okay. Um, and as I said, many of those biotechs. Uh, yeah, I pointed this out to people at 30, and I didn't take the trade, and and 35. Yeah, yeah. I did really well last week, and uh, I hear also. Gillette Sciences, uh, they're already pr producing ma massive amounts of their drugs, Remdesivir, which is not even approved yet, but... Right, if it's the right drug home run, it's not, I'm not trading on that speculation, you know. Yeah, it, it's a hundred billion dollar company, so, I mean, if it works, maybe it could go to 200, but uh, we don't know that. Yet. That's just trading gambling, but yeah. I, I don't feel like I can control the risk on that one, that just looks like a yes or no, and I don't like it. Um, but a lot of people are talking about it. And then uh, what else are you seeing? <clears throat> well, also the, the companies that are related to, uh, to network security are also showing relative strength, like companies Good like point. Cloudflare. I'm going to have Matthew, the CEO and his wow. co-CEO on my podcast in the next week or two. Uh, they're friends of mine, but I mean, this makes total sense as people have to deploy VPNs. If everybody's remote working, and even, you know, it used to be, obviously it was a big company before, uh, but the, the market's projecting this industry globally and be private VPNs and getting employees on their own cloud uh, and, speed, and speeding up those VPNs. That's what Cloudflare does, uh, routing in, and this is probably one of the fastest growing this will continue on. It's not a sexy company. It's a very plumbing type company out of uh, San Francisco, but offices around the world. You will be hearing much more about Cloudflare. There was all these rumors before they went public that Google would have to buy them. So uh, imagine in a world now 
that every single large tech company uh, will want them. Akamai is kind of an older version in the same yeah. Yeah. In, the same, in the same market. Uh, obviously, I think Cloudflare is a, a much better you know play for people just because the technology. And then obviously, people talk about Fastly, which I just don't hear as good of things about FSLY. No which is not done as well. So it's not like just buy anything and it'll work. You have to still stick to, you have got to do your work. Tech is, you know, not as simple as, as, as it seems. Yeah, and uh, I mean, well, the last thing that I wanted to mention is um, just be aware of some of the Chinese stocks. Last week we saw a big accounting scandal in uh, Looking Coffee, which kind of, uh, gap down 75% overnight, which uh, is going to impact the valuations for other Chinese stocks because now the market might start to basically dis discount that 70, 80% of the, the other Chinese stocks might have. Yeah. I think it's a really good point. In a bull market, listen, you want to speculate on China, but in a bear market where there's going to be a lot of China uh, blame and a lot of China hate uh, and a lot more... Um, Stringent, stringency about after this Luckin uh, disaster. If you if, if you got to be really careful about owning non-U.S. Uh, stocks. There's plenty of activity for people to just find U.S. companies. So uh, obviously Alibaba and Tencent continue to be too big to cheat. Right? They kind of control the infrastructure there. But um, I think this has to put a scare into investors for years to come because. You know, Luckin Coffee, they're selling coffee at a high margin. Uh, why do they got to cheat? Like, right, it's an addictive product at a very high margin. What was, like, coffee should work without cheating. So that's kind of scary. Yeah. And then one more, Ivan, I'll pull up. To, for people who want to speculate on retail, which is at this point crazy, uh, if you look at SPG, Simon Property, which owns the malls of which these retailers go into, you can see already that that's ready. That's a very stable REIT. Uh, other than in panics, and now you're getting one that may be bigger than 08, right? Because 08 was about the banks going out of business. This is about their customers going out of business, all their retail and renegotiating. So this is the one where I'm trying to see, you'll be able to see a lot of speculation about when malls are going to open by watching this stock uh, and be really careful. But this is something that I'm looking at some spec calls and again, like venture capital, it's, it, you know, if it takes out the lows or if it starts uh, recovering, uh, this stock, this is one of the best, you know, again, you can't, in this type of environment, financials matter. So it's very hard to speculate, but this is the mall. This is a proxy for high-end U.S. malls. 80% dividend yield. Yeah. Do you, do you cut it? Again, so, so again, these are where I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to speculate, I want to speculate on the right proxy and it's very risky environment. This, these show you how risky it is. These are premier, uh, these are premier REITs that are being thrown out, uh, for good reason right now, but that these are the ones that if there's going to be survival, they will come right back. Okay. All right, then let's make, make it a right weekend. Yeah, you too.